Hey listeners, Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network. I get the privilege of working alongside all of the creators at Enrollify, and I want to take just a moment to tell you about why I love I Want to Work There, a podcast hosted by Eddie Francis. In an era where attracting and keeping talent is more crucial and complex than ever, I Want to Work There dives deep into how colleges and universities can stand out as top employers. Whether you're involved in HR, leadership, or just keen on the dynamics of higher ed employment, this podcast is your new go-to resource. Join Eddie Francis as he tackles the pressing issues of employee recruitment and retention and offers actionable insights for positioning your institution as an employer where everyone wants to work. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or just search I Want to Work There wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Breaking Silos, a podcast that shines a light on the incredible partnerships happening across campuses every day. I'm your host, Shane Baglini from Muhlenberg College. Join me every two weeks for discussions with some of the best minds in higher ed marketing, enrollment management, student affairs, campus leadership, and more. Breaking Silos is part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites linked in the show notes below. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com. We are live from CupRap with a special edition of Breaking Silos. I'm joined by Jamie Yates, Chief Communications and Marketing Officer at Gettysburg College, and also member of the CupRap Board of Directors. Jamie, thanks so much for joining me and taking some time out of this busy conference. Thanks, Jane. Glad to be here. So Breaking Silos is all about working across campus and partnering with others and taking learning that we're going to get here at CupRap back to campus. So if you could just kind of share your thoughts about what people can take away from this conference and take back to campus and start to build some relationships with the marketing tools that they're getting here. Sure. So we've been really intentional with the conference. We always are. But this year, and as so much is changing in higher ed, and and specifically, I think we're all sort of experiencing our roles evolve. I loved the first session, Shane, you were on it, where we talked about the expanding role of the CMO. And it was both a moment to commiserate with one another, (laughs) but also to have this very real moment that like what's happening at so many of our institutions right now is something we've all wished for, right? We've always wanted a seat at the table. We've always wanted to be known as more than just the people who are here to make your brochure and promote something. But everything that comes along with it is something that we have to talk about. And so that's what the Cup Wrap Conference has been about this year. It's been about how do you articulate the ROI back to your leadership team, right? How do you train your team to understand what it not only means for your VP or your CCMO to be at the table, but what that means for them too in terms of accountability, in terms of how your work has to intersect with a strategic plan or a strategic direction. So I think what we're hoping people can take away from this is real ideas that they can take back to their campuses that they can implement right away. And and I've seen some examples of that in the past couple of sessions. Yeah, you mentioned the panel that I did. You had an interesting question during that panel about sort of justifying or explaining marketing's importance around campus. Can you speak to that in your current role about your team is growing and maybe the need to justify, for lack of a better term, why that's necessary? Yeah, so we are really fortunate at Gettysburg to have a president who believes in marketing and the work that we're doing. And, you know, the moment our president, Bob Giuliano, came to Gettysburg, one of the first things he did was put me on the leadership team. And it's it's been a tremendous opportunity. My team has done really important work with campus partners, not just with admissions and advancement, the ones that you would think about the most, but through our strategic planning process, thinking about the experience we're delivering to our students today and into our future, the marketing team had to be a part of that. And so probably the best example of it was a member of our team, our director of communications sat on that strategic planning committee as they were thinking about what the experience is going to look like at Gettysburg. And so being part of that, what we would call, you know, product development was essential. And it's been so important now as we are developing new programs and my team's thinking about how do we talk about these things, making sure the way that we're talking about them is authentic to what we're delivering is really important. Our best chance of doing that is to be at the table. That's great. 
It's good advice. It's it's really important. I think it highlights the need, like you said, to be at the table. It's the strategic initiatives of the institution are directly tied to what we're doing every day. So it's it's good advice. I want to switch to kind of talking about cup wrap and your involvement. I've been coming to this conference for a couple of years and I've seen some it change from a largely sort of PR comms pros conference to full-fledged marketing from all across the campus. Tell us about your involvement and, and the changes that you've seen in this conference over the years. Sure. So I've been involved in CupRap for as long as I've been in higher ed. And so that's almost 11 years now. And I've been coming to CupRap all of those years. And you're right, it, it's changed in a ton of ways. And so it makes sense though, right? Like as the industry's changing, the content at the conference has to change with it. And so this year is a great example of that, but it's changed in other ways too. Geography, right? We were talking earlier how we have people from Michigan and Missouri, and we're sort of expanding our presence, which is great. And what's cool too is as people, you know, leave their institutions and go to other places, they're still coming to Cup Wrap and they're bringing their colleagues with them too. But the one thing that is the most important thing about Cup Wrap to me and I think so many other members and the thing that has been unchanged is the community. So actually I have a sticker on my laptop and it says group ther- Cup Wrap Group Therapy. <laughs> I look forward to this conference every single year, of course for the content and all of the great things I'm going to learn and bring back to my campus, but also the camaraderie that comes along with it. I've always felt like if someone is a cup rep member, I can pick up the phone and I can call them when I need something. And I don't know that you get that at every conference. That's what makes this one so special. Yeah, that's what I really like about it. It's small enough that you don't feel overwhelmed with the amount of people, but it's also large enough that you're getting real expertise. And this, you know, the session on AI that we saw with Mallory and Jamie, it's like mind blowing to see. So it's great. So your role at Gettysburg, Chief Communications and Marketing Officer, obviously you're working across campus every day with everybody. Can you speak to the importance of being sort of willing to build those relationships from your position as the, you know, lead marketer at your institution? It's been essential. And I I shared earlier at one of the sessions that our president describes it as, you know, we are occupying more and more space, me and my team. And I think it's important for the community to understand what exactly that means and what our role is in helping the institution to thrive in this moment. And so we've been really intentional. It's not just been about me being out on campus, but over the past year, I can give a very specific example. We rolled out some new messaging. We rolled out some new programs, making sure that the whole community is fluent in how the college is talking about itself has been important. And so, you know, we're not just dedicating our time to creating great content and great videos and telling great stories. We're also putting a lot of time into meeting with campus partners to make sure they understand the message. They can think about their program and how it intersects with this larger vision of the college. And so last year, me and our vice president for enrollment gave 35 presentations to campus. Yes, it was quite the year all about how we talk about the college, right? How all of these pieces fit together. And now this year, I've turned it over to my team and they're having one-on-one discussions almost on a weekly basis. Just last week, a member of my team met with someone from our advancement division just to make sure that they, you know, understood how we're talking about the college. How can you talk about it with donors? And what's so good about that is the dialogue that happens because then we're learning from campus partners about what's resonating, right? What are our alums and donors resonating with the most when it comes to our message? And then that helps us to shape what we're doing too. So it's a bilateral, you know, relationship. Yeah, and we you're, you're speaking to something, a question that was asked in that evolving role of the CMO panel. Somebody was, they finally got their seat at the table and it was, I had to laugh because it, he was asking how to deal with getting what you asked for. So you mentioned your team taking a little bit more responsibility. How did you get your team ready to sort of elevate themselves at Gettysburg? So communication, I mean, it seems like such a simple thing, but I so believe in being transparent with my team, of course, up until the point I can be, right? And so when I leave a cabinet meeting and I come back to my team, if there is something that I can share with them that's going to help them understand the work that they're doing better, I'm all for it. And so we've been really intentional about doing things like that, about being specific with the team. Like if I'm going to ask you to prioritize this, here's how it fits into the bigger picture. We know about the college's strategic direction. We need to focus on this project because this is how it, you know, builds into the greater picture. 
I had this really cool moment relating it back to Cup Rep, where my team, you know, we submitted a bunch of Cuppies awards and I leave it to my team to decide what award they want to go yeah. for. They write the description themselves. And I was sitting one evening on my couch and I was reading what everyone had put together. And it was such a beautiful moment reading how every single person from my team was able to relate their work to the college's strategic direction, like to the bigger picture. It wasn't just about, I made this cool video, right? I, I wrote this great story. It was all about how it fit into this bigger picture. And that was was a really great moment for me as a leader to sort of see a real testament of my team understanding how they fit into it all. I, I love that. I mean, it, when you get that elevated presence, you're playing a bigger role in the mission of the institution. So the fact that your team is recognizing that, you know, right now at this point in time, is, it's got to be really rewarding. Absolutely. And we make sure to have fun too. Our team is sort of known on campus of traveling in a pack. <laughs> we go to lunch together, we get coffee together. And I feel like when the accountability increases, stress can increase too. But we have definitely found moments to have fun together. Yeah, and that's been essential. Yeah. You're in the trenches together. You have to be. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to close with t going back to Cup Wrap and, and looking forward and people that may not be as familiar or have never been here. As the board of directors looks at the conference, you know, as we wrap up tomorrow, what are some of the ways that CupRap is continuing to evolve this conference and be really deliberate about feedback from attendees and, and going forward, kind of working that into the, the program? Yeah. So the best thing people can do is give us feedback, right? And, and I can say for sure, especially in my role in helping to plan the program, I looked at every piece of feedback we got last year. And that's why this year, for instance, we're doing roundtables. We heard from people that they love the cocktail hours and they're fun, but they felt like they needed more time to sit around a table with their colleagues, with their peers, and really debate issues that are impacting all of us. And so the board is so purposeful in reading that feedback and adapting the conference to meet the needs of today. The other thing we're trying to be so intentional about something else that's so beautiful about cup rep is the variation in the type of institutions who come here and the variation in positions right there's assistant directors who are new in their careers there's vice presidents you know who need a different type of content and so we're trying to be as thoughtful as we can to make sure that no matter who you are or where you're situated in your institution you can take something away from this conference yeah, that's great. And and I keep going back to this panel, but it was interesting because we had a VP, an AVP, and then myself as a senior director. So it was really nice to get that sort of top down look at things because Gabe Welch, who was on the panel, is obviously very seasoned and it's been a long time VP. So his knowledge is invaluable. But then you've got the other kind of breaking into the industry folks like you mentioned. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for your time. I know you've got a busy schedule at this conference. If people want to find you, they can connect with you on LinkedIn and visit gettysburg.edu to see all the great work that your team is doing. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Breaking Silos is part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea and feature a selection of the industry best as your host. Learn from Day Builds, Jenny Lee Fowler, Eddie Francis, and many more of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com.